All right, so we learned a very important theorem in the previous class, which was about starting with us. So, I have vector space V over F, fine. I have S, a linearly independent set. How do we add? We add vectors to S such that vectors means say, so add a vector, let me write add a vector u to s such that s is union u is linearly independent. Right, all right. So, we will take up this idea and then proceed further. So, before that let me now talk of what is called finite dimensional vector space and infinite dimensional vector space. So, a vector space v over f is called finite dimensional finite dimensional if there exists a finite set call it there is a finite set s such that v is linear span of s is called so v is called in finite dimensional dimensional infinite if we cannot find any set s with finite number of elements elements with v is equal to l s of s. All right. So, finite number of elements with which I can span the whole thing. All right. So, you already saw that when we looked at linear in independence dependence here, we went to the linear span. So, they are related as such and therefore, I wanted to have this idea with me. So, let us look at some examples now to differentiate between the two things examples. First example, if I look at say R n, then I can generate R n using the vectors E 1, E 2, E n and what were they? E i was the vector which had everywhere 0, 1 at the ith place and 0 again everywhere else. All right. All it was same as, so let me write transpose of this because it is a column vector. So, look at the identity thing, look at the ith column of that, then this is E i for us. So, any element x here is of the type x 1, x 2, x n. So, this is nothing but x 1 e 1 plus x 2 e 2 plus x n e n. All right. So, if n is 10, if n is 10, we have s which consists of e 1 to e 10, 10 vectors which expands it. Fine. Similarly, anything you can look at that. For example, if I look at this example, w which is x y z belonging to R 3 such that x plus y minus z is 0. Then this condition tells me that look at this condition it tells me that x here element here is x y z it is of the type x is nothing but minus y plus z y remains as it is z remains as it is. So, it is y times minus 1 1 0 plus z times 1 0 1. So, it is linear span of these two vectors all right, any element here is the linear span of these two vectors. So, again it is finite dimensional all right. Third example which is not finite dimensional is look at this set of polynomials x set of polynomials in x with real coefficients fine. Then R x is not finite dimensional. So, the idea is simple suppose it is finite dimensional then there will be some size the degree of the polynomial will be some finite number all right. So, if R x is finite dimensional all 
if it is finite dimensional then R x is by definition linear span of S and S has finite number of elements fine. So, if it is finite dimensional it has to be the linear span of a finite set. So, S has finite number of elements. Now, if S has finite number of elements what are the elements of S? The elements of S are nothing but some polynomial f 1, f 2, so on till f n all right and what is n? n is the number of elements in S fine. So, again understand it nicely S has finite number of elements. So, I can assume assume number of elements in S is n. I look at all the polynomials f 1, f 2, f n for each one of them I can compute. So, for each s here I am computing a number and what are those numbers? Those numbers are degree of f 1, degree of f 2, degree of f n all right. These are polynomials. So, each of these polynomial has degree. What is the degree of a polynomial? The highest degree term all right. So, if I look at for example, 4 x square plus 3 x plus 100 all right, then degree of this is 2 because highest degree is 2 here all right fine. Similarly, if I have got x to the power 100 minus x plus 2 its degree is 100 fine. So, depending on the highest degree the degree of a polynomial is defined. So, what we see is that each of these numbers are going to be a number between some number to something all right. So, each of them will give me some number fine. Can I say that there is always a number? So, we know L let us look at natural numbers natural numbers natural numbers have the property that whatever number you give I can always find a bigger than that. So, if you give so given any number n or get any number m, we have a number m plus 1 all that is we always have a larger number it never ends natural numbers never end fine. So, if you are saying that I have certain set of polynomials their degrees are again only finite number of them. I can look at the largest value here I can. So, these are collection of numbers I can look at the largest number here largest number here fine. Suppose, the largest number in this collection all right largest number in this collection is some m naught fine. It means what if the largest number in this collection is m naught this will imply that that there the the polynomials in S have degree less than equal to m naught fine. So, if I look at this polynomial, so if you look at the polynomial x to the power m naught plus 1, look at this polynomial, this belongs to R x, but x to the power m naught plus 1 does not belong to linear span of S because when I am looking at linear span of S, I am only multiplying by scalars only a scalar multiplication is allowed fine. Since, only a scalar multiplications are allowed the degree of the polynomial does not increase. So, the degree here degree of terms will be less than equal to m naught itself all right. So, again I started with R x I am assuming that it is finite dimensional since it is finite dimensional. So, I have a finite set S which generates it or which gives me the linear span as a whole set. I take the collection of all the elements since it is finite I can enumerate it. It is a finite number of elements. So, I can enumerate all the elements once I have enumerated all the elements I look at degree of all those. Now, see so this is a finite number of numbers. So, I can look at the largest number among them suppose it is m naught then we are claiming that x to the power m naught plus 1 does not belong is that ok. 
and therefore this assumption that every all the polynomials can be generated with elements of s is wrong all right we get a contradiction therefore it is infinite dimensional is that okay so rx is infinite dimensional fine so this is important now some implications of the previous result that i had done so some corollary is of that let me write it corollary first corollary be careful so let me write the definition first so let corollary so let s be a finite all right s be a finite subset of a vector space v over f with a non zero element with a non zero element in s all right so i'm starting with that s already contains a vector all right so there is a vector u which is non zero such that u1 belongs to s. So, this is already assumed fine. Then, if s is a linearly dependent set, dependent set, then there exists a k such that u k belongs to linear span of u 1, u 2, u k minus 1. All right. So, what we are saying here is that I am looking at u 1, this is a non zero vector, then I am looking at u 2 which is in s, u 3 and so on. Is that okay? So, I am looking at this collection. Fine. 2 statement 2, I will prove them afterwards. 2, if S is linearly independent, all right, then, then U belongs to V minus L S of S, if and only if S union U is linearly independent. This is rewriting the previous statement itself. Recall that, there we wrote that S union U is linearly independent, if U does not belong to the linear span, which is same thing as saying that U belongs to V minus L S of S. All right. So, it is just the rewriting of that statement. Third, if S is linearly independent, dependent, then L s s of s is equal to v, if and only if each proper superset. So, here it is proper superset all right, set of s in v is linearly dependent. Fine. Let us understand it nicely. So, proof. So, it is rewriting the same thing in a different languages. There we said that, recall what we said that I started with a u which is non zero and then I want to add certain vectors to it. If I am able to add vectors, it means that I am picking vectors which is not in the linear span. This is what it says here, fine. This is also the same thing that once you have said that everything is full, I have been able to get whole of v. Then, if I want to add anything extra, I will only get linearly dependent part, all right. Linear independence will be lost. And the first part says that, that I have got u 1 which is linearly independent, u 2 is linearly independent. When I join u 1 and u 2, u 1, u 2 become linearly independent. I again join u 3 to it, I again get linear independence. I keep on going, I will get u k the first time which will be linear dependent, then it has to belong to the previous ones. Is that okay? That is all it says. So, I will just put the first one, second and third are already implications there. So, proof of 1. So, I am looking at this collection of vectors now u 1, 
u 1 u 2 u 1 u 2 u 3 I am looking at this collection and so on fine. Now, if this is linearly independent that is already given to me if this is linearly if linearly independent then I cannot write u 2 as linear combination of u 1 if linear dependent will imply that u 2 alpha u 2 plus beta u 1 is 0 and this will imply that u 2 is equal to minus 1 upon alpha times beta u 1 fine. I am saying alpha linear dependent it means what linearly dependent means u 2 belongs to the linear span of u 1 this is what it is fine. Recall the previous theorem it says that u 1 was linearly independent or let me write it this way for you. So, that there is no problem if linearly independent proceed to the next else if linearly dependent implies by the previous theorem that u 2 belongs to linear span of u 1 itself and therefore, we have been able to prove this part that k says that u k belongs to linear span of the previous ones. So, u 2 is a linear span of u 1 itself all right. If I come here if this is linearly independent all right then I can proceed to the next step if it is not if linearly dependent then by the previous theorem we know that see I came here because of this part proceed uh, proceed means this was linearly independent fine. Now, if this is linearly independent and this becomes dependent then this u 3 by the previous theorem belongs to linear span of u 1 u 2 is that ok. So, therefore, I have been able to again prove this is that ok. So, at I am just looking at all the collection of elements is that ok. S is a finite set. So, at some stage I am going to look at whole of S. So, I will get u 1 u 2 u n somewhere this will be whole of S is that ok. That is important. So, I am starting with a linearly independent set if whenever there is a linear dependence I can see that it is linear combination of the previous ones. What it says is that finally, I have a linear dependent set. So, this is a linearly dependent set that is given to us. So, look at this part it says that S is a linearly dependent set here is that ok. It tells me S is a linearly dependent set. So, finally, I have a linearly dependent set it means what? I am starting with independence, independence, independence and suddenly I get finally at linear dependence. It means that at some stage in the middle I would have got linear dependence. So, at some stage all right at some stage stage linear dependence dependence appeared for the first time. So, what do you mean appeared for the first time? Appeared for the first time basically means that till that stage everything was linearly independent. I had linear independence, then linear independence, linear independence at each stage till the previous stage I had linear independence and I got linear dependence for the first time. For example, this is linearly independent. If this is linearly dependent for the first time I get linear combination. If this is again linearly independent I get linear dependence. If this is linear dependence then this is a previous combination and so on is that ok. So, I am just uh, starting with linear independence, linear independence and finally, there is linear dependence. So, linear dependence would have come for the first time just a uh, stop there. So, it says that since this is the first time before that it is linearly independent it means from the previous theorem that this vector is a linear combination of these ones is that ok. This is what it says. So, you have to keep track of that that is very important for us fine. So, that finishes this corollary fine one more result lemma let s be a linearly independent set subset so i'll assume finite be a finite subset of a vector space v over f fine. Then each u belonging to linear span of s is a unique linear combination 
of vectors from this all right so this is important very very important what we are saying is that i know that s is linearly independent all right we are saying s is linearly independent once it is linearly independent i look at the linear span of the whole set fine of s and picking any element of u then it says that i can write u uniquely i cannot write it in two different ways is that okay that's important for example so what it basically says is that if i try to understand by example all right so i know that these two vectors 1 1 or let me write e1 e2 e3 is linearly independent subset in r3 then if i take any vector say 3 4 5 belonging to r3 then there is no way other than writing this as 3 times e1 plus 4 times e2 plus 5 times e3 this is the only way i can write there is no other way all right and this is happening because this is linearly independent set fine in place of that if i have a linearly dependent set so let me take e1 e2 e3 and e4 fine not e4 so let me write it as e1 minus e2 there are four vectors in this now four vectors fine then i know that this is linearly dependent this is linearly dependent set why it is linearly dependent set because look at this here it is 1 times e1 fine plus minus 1 times e2 plus minus 1 times e1 minus e2 plus 0 times e3 is 0 look at this system here all right e1 1 minus 1 so this the minus cancels out so i am looking at the system c1 so let me write this as u1 u2 u3 this as u4 c1 u1 plus c2 u2 plus c3 u3 plus c4 u4 is equal to 0 i am looking at this system in the unknowns c1 c2 c3 and c4 what we see here is that it has a non trivial solution trivial solution and what is the non trivial solution c1 is 1 c2 is minus 1 c3 is 0 and c4 is minus 1 fine please verify i may have done a mistake but the idea is that you have a non trivial solution and therefore you have more than one way of looking at things is that okay so this set has four vectors and there are elements of r3 it's a four vectors in r3 fine and therefore they are linearly dependent is that okay fine so here if you want to write for example if i want to write say this vector itself 100 which is e1 i can write it in two ways so that is one times e1 itself this is one way of writing it the other way of writing this will be use this u4 i can write 100 as fine look at here one times e1 minus e2 that is u4 plus one times e2 so i am writing this as one times u1 this is 1 times u4 plus 1 times u2 so i have been able to write it in two different ways is that okay so the unique linear combination is lost is that okay fine so let me just prove it for you so proof so suppose there exists there exists a vector u belonging to linear span of s such that u is equal to alpha 1 u1 plus alpha 2 u2 plus alpha k uk all right and u is also equal to beta 1 u1 plus beta 2 u2 plus beta k uk for some scalars alpha 1 to alpha k beta 1 to 
beta k. Is that okay? I am able to write u in terms of two ways. All right. I put the same u k k and k by adding extra zeros. All right. So I can always patch with extra zeros so that the vectors are same for me. Is that okay? Now from here, what I see here is that zero is equal to alpha one minus beta one times u one plus alpha two minus beta two u two plus alpha k minus beta k u k. All right. So, uh, what I am looking at, I am looking at a system which is 0 times c 1 u 1 plus c 2 u 2 plus c k u k. I am looking at this system with c i is unknowns. All right. Since the c i's are unknowns, I have to look at the system. We have been given that s was linearly independent, s linearly independent. It means what? This system has only the trivial solution c 1 is equal to 0 is equal to c 2 is equal to c k. All right. It is only the trivial solution and therefore, what I can relate this idea with this part, these two ideas to imply that this is also looking at alpha 1 beta 1, alpha 2 beta 2. So, using these two idea what I get is that if this has to be 0, then alpha 1 minus beta 1 has to be 0 it implies that alpha 1 minus beta 1 is 0. So, on till alpha k minus beta k is 0 and which is same thing as saying that alpha 1 is beta 1 and so on till alpha k is equal to beta k. So, my expression here that I wrote is a unique expression all right. So, I ended the lecture here itself. We will look at the next idea in the next class. Thank you.